Whoa, tech news, now that's cool. Samsung has gifted the world with a vision of our inevitable future, the folding phone. Yes, the Royole FlexPie was technically the first one to see daylight, but we can probably safely forget about that. At their developer conference this morning, Samsung showed off their device. Although it had some sort of protector around it and the lights were dimmed to only show the basic design, it was all very mysterious. But it's essentially a small tablet-style screen that folds in half to reveal another screen on the outside, and it looks actually pretty cool. The crease in the screen seems to disappear when it's open. Samsung and Google are apparently working together on Android updates that will accommodate what Google has dubbed foldables. And Samsung also demoed big changes it's making to its custom Android skin called One UI that should make operation easier on folding and big screen phones. But Samsung also teased new screen designs, the notched Infinity U and Infinity V, the Infinity O with a floating camera, and the notchless new Infinity. It would be cool if they solved the notch problem in their own way, but right now I feel like slider phones are the answer. I mean, and I like feeling like I'm in the Matrix movies. That's always a bonus. A couple days ago, Intel announced a 48 core Xeon processor built on the 14 nanometer process. And AMD was like, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's nice. Look what they did, the, oh, that's wonderful. And then they were like, whoa, bam, bam and announced a 64 core Epic processor built on the seven nanometer process. <laughs> the second gen chip named the Epic Roam will support multi-threading for a total of 128 threads, double the amount of the first gen Epic Naples processor. Roam uses a chiplets design, sounds cute, which pairs Zen 2 CPU modules built on the seven nanometer process with IO components built on the 14 nanometer process, which will apparently lower the cost and make chip binning easier. AMD also announced the first two accelerator cards to use their previously announced seven nanometer Vega GPU, the Radeon Instinct MI60 and MI50. They're geared towards enterprise applications like machine learning. And apparently, rather than taking that GPU and challenging Nvidia in the gaming space, they're leaning into the blockchain. So they're pushing GPU mining modules for cryptocurrency. Yay. Oh, AMD. That 64 core chip though, really great, huh? Let's remember the good times, guys. And if you were depending on hardware encryption to protect your data, time to use something else. Because apparently some SSDs from at least Samsung and Crucial, but possibly more vendors, do not encrypt data properly and don't even have password protection. Okay, but Windows BitLocker should still manage encryption, so at least you got protection there. Except no, you don't. Because BitLocker defaults to SSD encryption when it's available. Samsung and Crucial have both been notified and Samsung has advised users to use third-party software instead of hardware encryption or BitLocker until a fix is released. Or, hey, you know what, spread the love. Don't encrypt at all. There's probably loads of people who would benefit from reading your data. Go ahead and help them out, you know? Or don't, but you can help us out by checking out today's QuickBit sponsor, Brilliant. They're the new way to master key concepts in math, science, computer science, and professional topics. Learning from lectures and videos isn't as effective as diving in and doing things yourself, so Brilliant helps you master concepts by solving fun, challenging problems, not by watching someone else do it by doing it yourself. Over 5.5 million members are already sharing their curiosity and love for math and science, plus the first 200 TechLink viewers to sign up get 20% off. So head to brilliant.org slash TechLink and sign up today. You can be smarter. You know, who, do, who doesn't want that? I guess onto the quick bits. Qualcomm has been a leader in mobile technologies, particularly 5G networking, and now they'll have to share, as a US federal judge has ruled that the company will have to license its technology to rivals such as Intel and Samsung. That's gonna be a little awkward after the plentiful lawsuits between those companies, but I'm sure they can work it out, you know. Start low and then work your way up to hugs. A company called Furhat, for some reason, has unveiled the world's most advanced social robot, which consists of a head that can look around and display facial expressions through light projection. This is great. I mean, Boston Dynamics are making robots that do amazing things with their body, and these guys made the head. They can be like a, a lamer Voltron. And I'll form the head. <laughs> Security researcher Doug Medori has discovered that for two and a half years, internet traffic from the US was directed by international communications company, China Telecom, to pass through China before it arrived at its destination in violation of the internet's border gateway protocol. It's unclear whether the misdirect was intentional or not, but regardless, it is concerning. 
Midori is looking further into the story along with other researchers. Potentially even more concerning is the fact that SK Hynix has unveiled the world's first 96 layer 4D NAND flash, despite it having nothing at all to do with 4D in the dimensional sense. <laughs> what? Okay, the, the 4D apparently refers to the combination of 3D CTF or charge trap flash design paired with periphery undercell technology, which somehow adds up to 4D. I'd say it needs the mist in your face or vibration in your seat to be truly 4D. Otherwise it's nonsense. Did you ever do 4D in the theater? Yeah, yeah you know what I'm talking about. Brandon knows. And after physics bugs in the Fallout 76 beta were linked to manipulation of the game's frame rate, Bethesda has released a fix which amounts to locking the game's frame rate to 63 for some reason and capping the field of view to 80 in third person and 90 in first person. Yep, instead of changing the fact that the game physics are linked to frame rate in the engine, let's just lock the frame rate. Talk about a band-aid solution. <sighs> Linus was really upset about this, but the tears just aren't coming for me. But maybe that's because this episode is over. But don't you cry now. There'll be more tech news on Friday, and we'll be here to give it to you gently. Can you wait? I, I, that sounds weird. <laughs> Subscribe if you're a cool kid.